Okay, friends, now we are in Dhammapada stanza number 211. Tasma piyang na kairata piya pa sohi pa pako gantwa te sang navijanti ye sang natti piya piyang Brief meaning of this stanza is, hence hold nothing dear. For separation from those that are dear is painful. Bonds do not exist for those to whom nothing is dear or not dear. This is the brief meaning of this stanza. In this stanza, there are few words that we should keep in our mind. Tasma piyang na kairat. Hence, hold nothing dear. Why? As we know, we take objectives through our ears, nose, tongue, and the body. These bases are the way, the path where we are taking our objectives to mind. For example, when you take objectives through your eyes, we call it the picture. That picture should be like or dislike. Priya means you like it, you have dear to it. You are dear to that object, objectives that you are taking from your taken through your eyes. So, when you have attachment to that, attachment always come through your desire. And ignorance is very helpful to increase that desire. Then when you have this desire and ignorance, both are very helpful to have anger. This is the nature. So, when you are dear to some things or someone, what does it mean? You are connecting with the desire, ignorance and anger. These thoughts are there in your mind, but you can't recognize because at that moment you have only happy thoughts. Oh, I like it. I have it. You like it you, because you have it now. So you like, happiness is there. But for example, just think about, you bought a house. I'm not discouraging you to not to buy houses, but for example, the reality is when you have a house, you have to maintain it. Perhaps might be within in two years or three years, you have to paint it again repaint and there are some uh, other changes would be there and you have to take care every year you have to clean gutters every day during during the summer you have to clean it you have to do uh, lawn more there cut the grass and clean you have to collect the debris and take it away from the places where you are living these are the responsibilities. Now think, when you have something, you have to pay for it. You have responsibilities, duties with that things. And same thing, when you have something, your mind also going to be busy with that thoughts, that things. It's happening, is the nature of the mind. When you, uh, for example, you are going somewhere. Just think about you are going to a meditation center. And you going to meditation center by your car. You park at the place where you are supposed to park. And then you went to the meditation hall to practice meditation. During meditation time, you heard the sounds from the area where you where did you park. It look like exactly cra car crash. Then what kind of thoughts would be there in your mind? Ah, 
it looked like a crash or then right away you want to make sure whether it's happened to your car or not your car or someone else why your car is in your mind all the time even that meditation is try to continue but you are not able to continue that meditation why your mind is asking something else because your car is there in your mind so you can see each and every time if you have something you have to pay for it you have something to do that with that things this is the nature that's why in this particular stanza he is giving us a lesson try to be a person who is not taking dear or not that kind of mentality is the mentality that we should we supposed to develop i would like to share i'd like to share uh, uh, something with you to understand this situation you can see this slide through this slide you can learn the process in here i i is here and uh, against the i you can see a apple these two things are we can categorize as a physical things nothing happen with these physical things keep in together but because of i and the i consciousness this is the connection with perception perception is coming through with your i consciousness so i is here pictures coming from outside and then with the help of i consciousness you you have perceptions and then you ready to have contact through the contact you you going to get feelings these are the feelings that you can take like dislike neutral whatever you like you read to grab it whatever you dislike you reject it and naturally you reject it if the if you have neutral feelings you don't respond but still you have one of these you ready to grab it or reject it but at that moment you don't respond it at the end what you remain you remain with suffering why whether you grab it or reject it it does not matter it is impermanent and unsatisfied and unsatisfaction is there impermanent and unsatisfaction is there as a result of these thoughts suffering will arise in your mind whatever the objects you are taking through your eyes so when these all steps are passing that is the time that you can end with the grabbing or rejecting or not responding this this should be the last part but whatever the reaction would have there it is impermanent and unsatisfied so suffering is there suffering is there why you have thoughts you are getting into kind of uh, uh, extremes what is that like dislike you want to grab it or you want to reject it these are the thoughts that you have when you are in this extremes so dear friends now we are trying to going into a place where we don't have any of these thoughts that is our plan that is the purpose of our practice you can see all these ears nose tongue body are the bases sound smell taste touch taking feelings and like dislike and neutral 
grab reject no respond in uh, impermanent whatever you like at the end you can see it is impermanent and whatever you dislike uh, all the time and you you try to reject those things you like to away from these things but unsatisfaction is there but anyway whether it is also impermanent but at the end you can you can have suffering both of this not both of actually for all these response whether it is like or dislike it does not matter finally ending with the suffering this is the nature this is the way how bases are working with objectives this is the nature so dear friends that's why in this particular stanza is giving us wonderful lesson about our practice that lesson is you not supposed to have thoughts dear to something or some uh, someone and also you not supposed to separate them from those that are dear is painful Bo uh, bonds do not exist for those to whom nothing is dear or not dear this is very important so whenever you have thoughts regarding your desire regarding your uh, anger or ignorance that thoughts are not helpful to keep your inner peace that thoughts always giving us directions to increase your unwholesome thoughts that is not the purpose of our life we are paying full attention we are practicing for what to gain our happiness increase our peace that is our practice purpose of our practice so in here piya pa so hi papa ko always when you have thoughts regarding desire then you have unhappiness there no one can eliminate that so equanimity is the most important thoughts that we should we supposed to develop equanimity so to develop our equanimity to stay with our equanimity it is not happening in once you have to practice dhamma practicing and practicing yes you can be that person there was there is a story uh it's happened with the monks that there was a conversation with a monk and a lay person one day there was a family that family family husband and wife had the arguments and fight so following the early morning the wife left from that household life she went away from the husband somehow later on the husband understood wife is not there in the house so he was so compassion and he was thinking himself oh my my wife don't know anything about this area i mean uh, he she has to go through a forest when she will see when she is going through the forest he might get attacked from uh, uh, some kind of wild animals therefore with that compassionate thoughts he wanted to help her and found her so he started he came out from the house to search in her wife his wife on the way as a first person he met a monk perhaps uh, that my monk might be going for arms round but anyway he met that monk seen the monk he was very happy he started to inquire about that lady about his wife venerable sir did you see a woman walking through this this area this path and then that monk was laughing at him and uh, smiling to him and then said i don't know whether woman no man i met a skeleton little while ago who passed me skeleton see that monk 
was mindful he was keep his mindfulness himself he did not get any kind of perceptions to decide whether it is a male or female he did not care just he met that person and he was aware he was mindful so he was aware i met someone but he did not give up any kind of thoughts in his mind recognizing whether female or male now we can see if you recognize someone as a female or male then according to your uh, behaviors your habit habitual uh, ha habit uh, habitualities and all these things then you ready to judge that person you ready to judge you ready to say oh I mean just think about in a in normal way if you are male who is made in a female then you, there is there is attraction this naturally happen this kind of things if you are female if there is a meeting with a male there is attraction that buddha mentioned in once in this world the beauty is the beautiful most the, the most beautiful things that uh, uh, male can see is female picture female the most beautiful picture that female can see male male the buddha's explanation is this so in the according to this explanation now you can see if you are turn into any judgment if you are if you are ready to say if you ready to see things in this kind of way or this is female this is male so automatically without knowing some thoughts are arising in your mind regarding desire regarding anger regarding ignorance just think about there is a person who was with you in your kindergarten pre k school you had the fight and arguments you did not get get on well, very well with that uh, uh, school in classroom even in the pre k still you have that unwholesome thoughts in your mind think about now you are in the 40s when you meet that person again somewhere how would be the nature you don't like to see that person you don't like to talk to that person why anger is there in your mind anger is there in your mind or oh, not only that even think about huh? there is two person particularly with uh, i mean someone in a party or somewhere else in a special occasion wear in a special ways some cloth and then without knowing with you both are not able to recognize but anger is there in their mind oh he, his dress is very beautiful you like oh if i have that kind of yes you have that kind of thoughts anger is there jealousy is there and because ignorance mixing with your desire all these unwholesome thoughts are arising in your mind it's happening is the nature of undeveloped mind that's why in this particular stanza is guiding us giving some direction us to be be, be aware piya payo hi pao if you have attachment with some kind of uh, pictures sounds taste feelings then what you are accumulating right away you are accumulating unwholesomeness papa papa ko means unwholesomeness is there demerits are there demerits are there not merits demerits are there if you are taking something as beautiful 
and uh, uh, very attractive. I like it. I wanted it in this manner. Then demerits are there right away. Ganta te sang navichanti. So we are trying to eliminate our defilements. Having such a life, uh, you can't eliminate your defilements because you are living with ignorance, you are living with desire, and all the defilements are there now. Each and every moment through your basis, you are ready to develop your uh, demerits, which is dangerous for your wholesome practice. Yes, I'm not tippy up young, but if you are able to manage your life, manage your thoughts with uh, equanimity, then you don't have any problem. Whether it is like or dislike, you don't have matter. You don't have a matter. When you go to somewhere, people who are meeting with you, you don't have any thoughts of them. You are not any, uh, uh, you don't have any judgment. Whether he is uh, American or whether he is Sri Lankan or Indians, uh, uh, Russian, you don't, you don't care about their ethnicity and where, where they are coming. What kind of religions they practice, you don't care. What kind of color is there, you are blind with that. How would be the nature? You can be, you can live with the, with them happily and peacefully. You don't have any unwholesome thoughts in your mind. But if you are going somewhere, looking at them, if you are thinking, ah, oh, where is this guy coming from? He's not look like me. He has different uh, appearance, and he's not to speak in the language that I'm speaking. Uh, he is not practicing the religion that I am practicing. He don't know the things that I know. If you are judging a person in this manner, what kind of thoughts will be there in your mind? Anger, discrimination, and all other unwholesome, jealous, and we all other unwholesome thoughts would be there. Why? Because of your judgments. Therefore, in this uh, stanza, giving us a wonderful advice, yesang natti piyapyang, if you can live without taking anything as dear or not, that kind of mind is the mind which is helping us to increase our happiness, our inner peace. So, friends, it's not happening in once. You have to practice for that. Without practicing, you can't gain that kind of mentality. That's why the Buddha, as you know, in life stories of the Buddha, there was a person, Sopaka, very young boy. That young boy belongs to very poor, and also he's in lower lower caste according to their social situation, lower caste family. He was and he meeting with the Buddha, Buddha did not care anything. What Buddha asked from him, would you like to become a monk? Oh yes, Venerable Sir, please help me. Sunita, very poor, Lower, lower caste person. Not only that, there were so many people. Even those days, there were discrimination as uh, male and female. And males did not uh, give any chance to females those days in India when the Buddha was there. But Buddha did not care. Buddha create his dispensation, keeping all these Uh, breaking all these discrimination thoughts and discrimination situations, social status, is, he had been changing. Why? 
because Buddha, the Buddha or any Arahant monk did not have thoughts about the deer or not. Whenever they are looking at someone or something, whether they like or not, it is they, they did not have that kind of thoughts because they did not look at something with uh, ignorance, desire and hatred, any of defilements not get influence to see things, to hear someone. This is the nature when you practice, when you gain your concentration and wisdom. This is the nature. So Buddha was that kind of person. He did not have any kind of judgment. He met people at that moment. He ready to get them as human beings. That's it. He, he accept all, the, all meetings as human beings. Uh, when he meet in with other living beings, he take as a living beings. And when he was giving Dhamma talks, he had mentality, or oh, I'm giving Dhamma talks for all benefits for all living beings. Dear friends, we already have these kind of examples for our life. The Buddha is the role model for our life. Through his life, we can see how was his life, how, was, how wonderful his practice, and how peaceful he, his life was. We can see all these things through his life. So we have to develop our inner courageous to gain that kind of peace ourselves. Path is clear now. So what we should do, Let's do it. Path is clear. All the materials are here with us. Let's apply. Let's do it. Then we can experience ourselves. We don't want to see other stories to see the results. We can experience ourselves. This is the nature of the Dhamma. Dhamma is not something that you should wait to get the results. Right away, you can have that, that experience, right away. So everything happening with our mind development, we are working for that. Therefore, we have to take this advice to gain our wisdom, inner peace, concentration. Through that developments, we can attain enlightenment. That is our goal. That is our final goal. So having that goal, let us practice Dhamma for our own liberation. Liberation is not something. In here you can see liberation. You can away from all these unwholesome, unhappy stages if you are able to maintain this kind of mentality. Without grabbing and rejecting things, if you can stay. So happiness is there. So unfortunately, because of our ignorance and our un, uh, ignorance and our desire, we are living with all this nature, grabbing and rejecting, which we are not supposed to develop. So seeing this reality, let us try to finish this desire, ignorance, benefits for ourselves for our happiness particularly thinking about our happiness i think that would be enough for today i mean keeping in this let us practice dhamma so let's meet uh, in uh, another day to continue our dhamma discussions let us use this opportunity to share merits with others. First of all, think about our departed relatives, friends, family members, and pets who departed, name of us, by the power of these merits and metta thoughts. May they all be well, happy, and peaceful. May they be able to attain ultimate bliss of Nibbana, having that aspiration, say, sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. 
whoever is affected by COVID-19 and any other sicknesses, by the power of these merits and metta thoughts, may they be able to get rid of their suffering and pain. May they be well, happy and peaceful. Having that aspiration, make blessings upon them, saying, Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. May you all be well, happy and peaceful. All your wishes come true by the power of these merits and metta thoughts. May we all be able to attain ultimate bliss of Nibbana. Having that aspiration, say Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. By means of this meritorious deeds, may I never join with the police. May I join always with the wise until the time attain Nibbana. May the suffering be free from suffering. May the fear struck be free from fear. May the grieving be free from grief, so too may all beings be. From the highest realms of existence to the lowest, may all beings arisen in these realms, with poem and without poem, with perception and without perception, be released from all suffering and attain to perfect peace. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Thank you very much.